now that I have a little more time, I can go into details. So, the fight I'm going to talk about is uh, Anthony Mundine versus Sergey Radchenko that I covered a little over uh, 13 hours ago. And now I have some more time where I can actually go into details about what it actually means. So, Anthony Mundine is now the new silver WBC 154 pound champion. Now, what that means is sometime within the next six months, he has to fight, well, Floyd Mayweather has to defend the title against him. Just like when you look at the 147 pound division, Floyd Mayweather has to fight Amir Khan, or it's going to go to mandatory purse bid. So, what I'm saying is this. Now, do we expect that Floyd Mayweather is going to fight Anthony Mundine? No. But the division and the belt itself is probably one of the most coveted belts in boxing, the heavyweight, the welterweight for sure, and definitely this um, 154 pound belt. So when we talk about the 154 pound division before I talk about the title, let's talk about Sewell Canelo Alvarez, Iris Lindy Laura, both of them fighting at 155 right now. You got Mikhail Cotto who jumps up and down. You got Jamel and Jamal Charlo, the brothers Charlo, uh, Venice Monterosi and K9 Bundridge, Carlos Molina, you know, Demetrius Andre, um, I said Austin Trout already, um, and the list goes on. It's a tough division. So here, you got Anthony Mundine of Australia sitting at the top of the pile. Why is he sitting at the top? It's because all those guys in that division are trying to get a title shot. So even though they may be ranked higher than him, let's say pound for pound or as far as the, or as far as the division is concerned, He's the guy under the champion because he's supposed to be next fighting the champion. You get what I'm saying? So, what I'm saying is this. We've noticed that Al Heyman's been fancy and picking up, I mean, picking on Australian fighters. You know, we know Australian fighters have had a bad year when it comes to Sam Solomon. He almost defeated Jim Jermaine Taylor, almost, but then the knee, whatever the hell happened. You got, um, you got Jared Fletcher. You got poor old Daniel Gill got his face smashed in. You got Daniel Dawson who actually fought a very, very good fight against Austin Trout. And then you got Anthony Mundine with the stink in people's mouths of him losing the way he did to Joshua Claudi. People saying it was over. So now the question was, how did this guy get to fight for this belt? Well, I really don't want to go into the politics of it, but it happens in boxing where you'll, you'll be ranked in one division for one belt, but then in another division, you may not even be ranked for another belt, you may not even be ranked at all. So, you, well, if you didn't hear, during a post fight interview, um, he brought up the name Canelo. Canelo was supposed to fight Joshua Clotty. The reason why that fight didn't happen because Canelo got an, an injury, allegedly. So, now you're thinking, well, I know Mundi's not going to fight Clotty again. What fight would be good for him? You know, a fight that I think would be really good for him and mutually beneficial? K9 Bundridge. K9 Bundridge or Carlos Molina or Ishe Smith or somebody like that. Because Mundine's in a situation, I guess what I'm trying to explain to you is this. The history of the 154 pound title is very prestigious. You got Floyd Mayweather holding him multiple times. You got Oscar De La Hoya, Winky Wright, Terry Norris, Thomas Hitman Hearns, Manny Pacquiao. Um, um, Vernon Forrest, you know, and the list goes on. So now you got Mundine in that in that category after Mayweather because either Mayweather's going to fight him or he's going to be the champion. Then Mundine is actually where he wants to be as far as like it's called Frotch has said an international superstar. And in order to do that, he's telling fighters to come over there, but yet with his skills and technique as far as techniques as far as selling the fight, as far as um entertaining as and selling the fight at the same time, he's perfect for the United States. But listen, Al Hammond gonna come call him. I think we already know that already. Like when it comes to that 154 pound title, he already like beating up on Australian fighters. You know, you might as well say it's him doing it, because he's sending his fighters after y'all, you know, all your Australian fighters. So I'm thinking to myself that this is the perfect opportunity and chance for, oh wait, here, I got the list right here. Listen to this crazy list of 154 pounders. Sewell Canelo Alvarez, Aries Lendi Lar, Cornelius Bungers, Ishe Smith, Demetrius Andre, Jamel and Jamal Charlo, the brothers Charlo, Venice Monterosi and Carlos Molina, and no, not that Molina, but yes, that Molina, but not the one that fought Broner, 
Austin No Doubt Fish Trout, James Kirkland, Joshua Claudi, Jurbek Bisang Gurov, Sasha Yingunyan, Sergey Rabchenko, Julian Williams, Andy Lee, you know, and Brian Rose, Shane Mosley still on there for some reason, Jesus Soto Karras. So when you look at those names, and when you look at the top five, Sokino Alvarez, here is Landy Lar, K9 because he's a champion, Demetrius Andre, and I don't know who I will put in that number five spot. I'm not ranking Floyd Mayweather because Floyd Mayweather, I don't consider him to be a 154 pounder. And the reason why I'm not ranking him is because I don't think he's going to fight Mundine. But I'm saying this. That's the top five. And, well, I didn't name the fifth, but the division is probably one of the toughest division, if not the toughest, in boxing. Well, no, it's not the toughest. I'm going to say 147 by far is the toughest division and deepest division in boxing. But as far as 154 pounds is concerned, I mean, hell, look, what if Al Hamid wants to send Keith Thurman? You know Keith Thurman is a small, you know, he's a large 147 pounder, but a small 154 pounder. So what if you want to send Keith Thurman, like, you know, okay, all right, I want to pacify you, go get Mundine. Mundine's got to be eating healthy every day. He's got to stay away from the vice and scene because if he's serious about what he, what he wants to do and the fact that, like, he literally got this chance of a lifetime and now he's pretty much in a situation where, like I said, he's the WBC 154-pound number one contender. So, basically, he's A-side as far as everybody else below him, but what I'm saying is, like, if he really wants to um, get American fans to stop calling him a bum and get people to stop saying this and that and this and that about him, he's got to make sure that he's in shape. This 154-pound division is not a joke. You know, so, long story short, of course, I'm an Anthony Mundine fan. Um, I may seem a little bit critical, but at the same time, since I watch so much boxing, I guess I can say I know how, like, he's in a, a lot of the uproar, and I'm not, it wasn't a lot of uproar, but a lot of the issues that fans had was, how did Mundine get a shot like that? Because that's how important that WBC 154 pound number one contender spot is. You see what I'm saying? So I'm wondering to myself, like, does he really know, you know, how important of a situation he's in? And that's why his next fight, he's got to make sure right now, since he's that champion, he's got to might as well treat himself like, he's got to treat himself right now like he's the full WBC champion. So therefore, he's got to be, you know, in a different phase of his life as a boxer and knowing like, okay, everything I used to do before, cut that shit out. You know, if I used to have trouble making weight, then I'm going to make sure I never get 10 pounds or anything above the weight. Because, you know, like I said, that 154 pound, and then, and then for an Australian to get it, I don't think there's ever been an Australian 154 pound champion. WBC. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live, and I cover boxing. Things have been moving a little fast, so right now I'm getting back to, you know, everything's starting to calm down. I get to get back into my regular routine of watching boxing all day on Saturdays. I'm pumping out, you know, somewhere between 20 to 30 videos a week. And also, to the people who have been watching, I know things have been a little, you know, but I've been traveling a lot and there's a lot going on. So I want to say please subscribe. Right down below is the website I'm associated with, Real Combat Media. Officially press approved. And we cover boxing, mixed martial arts, jujitsu, whatever you want, right down below. Please subscribe. All my social media stuff is right down below. I put it. I put it down there for a reason. That's me personally typing that stuff. So what I'm saying is that there's a reason why I put it. They just click the stuff, you know, and that goes for the website too. Just click it. T Street controversy. T Street controversy. Live.